Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I shall be doing a Blu-ray and DVD update for April 2021. Uh, so let's of course begin with the Blu-rays. First up we have the 2019 Joker movie starring Whacking Phoenix and Robert De Niro. Overall, a very strange but very rewarding reimagining of the Joker character set in the 1980s where Arthur Fleck, played by Whacking Phoenix, is an aspiring comedian who wants to be loved by all, somebody who is struggling with various symptoms of mental illness, which was something very well written into this story and helmed wonderfully by the directing style of Todd Phillips. And we see him down on his look, somebody who is very much rejected by society, and that downward descent of rejection really does take a toll on Arthur's mental health as he then becomes... The Criminal of the Joker, are very unintentionally, um, this film really helmed that story point and just showed how someone who is obviously unstable, somebody who is struggling and just wants to be loved by someone and have some kind of comfort in their life of acceptance, how that can really turn on its head and that's very much what we see with Arthur Fleck in particular. The scene that really drove that home for me personally was the absolutely jaw-dropping moment where he finally meets his hero of Murray on The Murray Show, played by Robert De Niro. And that sequence of conflict was a segment of the film that I just had to pause, since it was just so riveting in terms of the cinematography, the shock value. If you know what I'm talking about, obviously I'm not going to spoil it, but that segment in particular really did sell the character of the Joker finally evolving from what Arthur Fleck was as a timid overall very heartwarming person to an extent, so this film definitely drove home the narrative of a villain's origin story, and I'm really hoping we will eventually see a sequel to this. I don't know what the plans are for that as of right now, but I'm hopeful that at least at some point we will see this incarnation of the Joker again. Uh, so if you haven't seen this film, definitely I would recommend it. A very different DC, and I guess to an extent superhero movie at that point. Next up we have Alita Battle Angel, directed by Robert Rodriguez. This was a film that I genuinely had no interest in at all, especially when the marketing for this film was released. I checked out the trailers and it just looked like another CGI headache, like Ready Player One or Valerian as an example, so I wasn't really keen on this, but a friend recommended it to me for the sci-fi influences, and overall I have to admit, I was very intrigued by the story of this female cyborg just being found in a scrap pile, and over the course of the film trying to find her own origin, find out where she came from, etc. And there were a load of really kind of unique character moments so throughout, and this made for not the best film in the world, but an easy setup to a franchise, and that's what I'm thinking is trying to be achieved with this, especially for the ending where we have Ed Norton, who was meant to be portraying the villain known as Nova. I had a look through the manga for this, which was released in the 90s, and there's a lot of depth to that character from the looks of things, so I'm hoping that if this film does get a sequel that we will see that in a future film with Ed Norton as a prominent villain role since he was kind of cheated out of this film with him being an overarching kind of presence but it was other characters and obviously other actors kind of speaking for him and so I'm hoping that we will see something along those lines in a future film perhaps where he is a prominent villain but I guess time will tell on that front. Not something I'd recommend for everybody, but if you're interested in kind of cheesy CGI science fiction, then I'm sure this will be the film for you. So that is Alita Battle Angel. Next up we have The Theory of Everything, the Stephen Hawking film. This is a film that I've wanted to watch for several years. I ended up watching the diagnosis scene on YouTube, which was cruel in the utmost of ways, where Hawking is told that he has a muscle deterioration disease, it's a rare condition, and that he only has two years to live. And obviously, with how Hawking in real life was as a man, we know obviously very differently about that. And seeing that visualized in a film based on the notes provided by Jane Hawking, this was overall a wonderful film kind of exemplifying the struggles involved with not only Hawking deteriorating as a man physically, but obviously being a very important key role in science and research into time in particular, but how his condition affected those around him and ignorantly, I, that's not really something that I actually considered knowing the bare minimum that I did about Stephen Hawking as a man anyway. 
Um, but this film really inspired me. It was overall a very inspiring story. And I did go away and end up looking into Hawking's life and trying to research and read into really as much as I possibly could. Um, so if you're interested in Stephen Hawking as a person, this film is certainly something I would recommend checking out to give a visual account for the events that happened in the man's life. And was very eye-opening to say the least, so that is the theory of everything. Next up we have Bohemian Rhapsody, which is sadly a film I haven't watched as of yet. I picked this up on the other day, and honestly I cannot wait to check this out. I'm a big Queen fan, and Freddie Mercury in particular, with this being, I guess, just an account of Mercury's life reimagined into a film. I'm looking forward to seeing what this is like, especially with this being directed by Brian Singer, which I actually did not know up until I picked this up. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of directing style this will have. And Rami Malek is a fantastic actor. If you haven't seen the show Mr. Robot, um, which is where I prominently know Rami Malek from, that is a series I would 100% recommend, and I cannot wait to see how he handles uh, portraying Freddie Mercury in this film. So that is Bohemian Rhapsody. Perhaps I'll feature this in a future update video. And last up for the Blu-rays, we have Thunder the Barbarian, the complete series. This is an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon released in the 1980s, and overall for the Blu-ray release, I've been very impressed with a lot of the stuff that Warner Archive have released in particular. I absolutely loved the Johnny Quest Blu-ray set for the original series, and this is just as good of an upgrade, if not better. Overall, some phenomenal cartoon episodes, 21 overall for the complete series, some great info in terms of the special feature that's included on here as well. Um, this is a show that I would definitely recommend. Comparatively, I guess you could look at it as He-Man before He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, for those unfamiliar with the show. But if you love science fiction cartoons, this one in particular is set in a great sort of post-apocalyptic future with some beautiful artwork, and it's a show that I would definitely recommend giving a go. Um, so that is Thunder the Barbarian, the complete series. Let us move on to the DVDs. Moving on to the DVDs, first up we have the TV miniseries of Chernobyl, which is a show that I've been recommended countless times and something that I have wanted to pick up for a little while. And overall, the series in itself, I don't really know too much about. I've not delved into this as of yet. All I really know about it is the obvious of it dramatising the story behind the nuclear power plant disaster from the mid-80s. Um, but I've heard that Paul Ritter, who sadly passed away not too long ago, known, I guess, most prominently for his role in Friday Night Dinner as Martin Goodman. Boiling. He played a great role in this from what I've heard, and so I cannot wait to check this out. He's a very diverse actor. I loved him in the Channel 4 series, no offense. He played a great character in that, so I'm hoping that perhaps it'll be something on par with that or maybe similar for a drama kind of role. And from what I've heard of this series, it's very, very gripping and something that I will likely talk about in further detail in a future update video. So that is Chernobyl. Next up we have Beavis and Butthead Volume 4, which is something that I have wanted to grab for the collection for a while. I have Volumes 1 through to 3 and the movie, and with this being... A kind of different take compared to the other volumes, since this is volume 4, which is essentially season 8 of the show, which was the revival run from 2011. And with that in mind, this, I guess, season, if you want to term it that way, the episodes are fully intact, which I was very surprised about, since the original run of Beavis and Butthead sadly didn't get released on full on DVD, it doesn't have all of the sort of skits and music videos sort of commentaries and things like that basically due to clearance issues with a lot of the content but this is the full content for what you would expect to see literally on MTV as you are watching this as normal on television and I was very surprised about that. There's some great episodes on here. I've only seen half of them so far, but so far so good. Great Mike Judge humor. I love the characters of Beavis and Butthead, who are staples in cartoon history at this point. And overall is a show that I absolutely love. And I'll likely review this volume in particular, just with it being a little bit more concise compared to the other volumes, since there are so many episodes, considering how short that they are, released onto the other volumes on DVD. So I might do something with those at some point, maybe just go for a few favorites. But this is something I would like to review in a little bit more detail, so I'll probably do that at some point in the future on the channel. Uh, so it's Beavis and Butthead, Volume 4. 
Next up is October Sky, which is a film that I have had in the collection for a little while. I don't think I've featured this on the channel, but I've only watched this as of late anyway. And it's another one of those films that I really wish I had seen much sooner. This was overall a very inspiring and overall very fun film, set in the 1950s in a small coal mining town. And Homer Hickam is inevitably going to become just another coal miner once he graduates from high school. Instead, after witnessing the Sputnik satellite being launched into Earth's atmosphere, he then gets an interest for science and wants to become a rocket scientist. And so him and his friends together, they try to build a rocket that will successfully launch, with many, many failures which were overall very humorous. But overall, this film was absolutely phenomenal, really well told in terms of the story. I really do want to go and have a look at the original source material, since I believe this is a movie adaptation of a book of the same story. But either way, this was a great film, great characters. Laura Dern in particular played a great character for the teacher that heavily inspires the students to keep at what they're doing. And there's another film that I would strongly recommend checking out, so that is October Sky. Next up is Say Anything, which is a very typical coming-of-age romance-style story, and overall was quite enjoyable for what it was. It had a very interesting side plot, which I felt was kind of overshadowed by the typical story of a will-they-won't-they -they style of relationship between Lloyd Dobler and Diane. And the character of Lloyd, played by John Cusack, was overall a very fun character. Kind of your typical sort of underdog style character set within an American high school. And a character that you do root for, who is basically portrayed as the everyman, as someone that every man should aspire to be like. And I thought that was quite humorous for it being a kind of stereotypical role, but still very well handled. And this was overall a very well written film that had some unique plot points to say the least with the side story of corruption with the dad character. Um, but other than that, it was kind of by the book and somewhat predictable for, for what it was as a will they won't they style relationship storyline. But other than that, overall I found it to be quite enjoyable, so that is say anything. Next up we have a Steven Soderbergh film, The Limey. This was recommended to me by a friend, and overall I found it to be okay. It wasn't really what I was expecting, it was very short to my surprise, and it was your typical kind of revenge plotline where a father is trying to take revenge on who he believes has killed his daughter. And it was an okay story, it wasn't really gripping in my honest opinion. The main thing that really drew me to this was the editing style. It was very jarring, where certain scenes would kind of play out to an extent before they had actually happened, where you would see visual hints of an event that was going to happen before it actually happened as part of the story. And I thought that was very interesting. It kind of gave sort of alternative kind of takes of what could possibly happen and then showed you what really happened. And that was something that I felt they could have played with a little bit more, perhaps, but overall, this was okay for what it was. Not really something I would highly recommend, but maybe worth the one watch if you're interested in that kind of film style. So that is The Limey. Next up, we have The Talented Mr. Ripley, which came out in the late 90s. And this film is certainly not what I was expecting. This was a very strange story, very well written and was overall phenomenal for the actors involved, especially Jude Law playing the character of Dickie Greenleaf, who has abandoned his home of New York and instead gone to Italy to live up his life with Marge, played by Gwyneth Paltrow. And Dickie's father wants him to come home, and so he pays a large sum of money to Tom Ripley, played by Matt Damon, a character that is very reminiscent of the role he played in Goodwill Hunting. And so he is hired to go over to Italy and try and bring Dickie back home and convince him to come back to New York. Only instead, the pair work together to manipulate the father and use that money to live up their life in Italy. Only for things to horribly go wrong between the two once they have quite the falling out. And from there, the film is overall phenomenal for its portrayal of identity theft gone horribly wrong and the skills that Tom Ripley has being used to his own advantage, affecting those around him. Overall, a very well-written story that is quite complex, and I really did quite enjoy the ending. It was quite dark towards the end, which I certainly was not expecting, but if you haven't seen this film, I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. So that is The Talented Mr. Ripley. 
Next up we have the highly anticipated sequel to Train Spotting, and that is T2 Train Spotting. Sadly, I haven't seen this as of yet. It's been a long time since I've seen Train Spotting, so I do plan on rewatching that film before I do check this out. But Danny Boyle is a fantastic director, so I've been a fan of for a very long time. And I've heard very good things about this. I'm kind of surprised that this really sort of came to fruition so many years after the original film. Um, but from what I have heard about it, it seems to be very good and overall a decent enough successor to the original. Um, so once I've seen this, perhaps I'll feature it in a future update video, who knows, but that is T2 Train Spotting. Next up, we have a couple more Hanna-Barbera cartoons, the first of which is the complete series of Wallagator. This is an old 60s cartoon which was part of a trio which aired with the show Lippy the Line and Hardy Haha, -Ha, which I've shown on the channel before, and another cartoon which sadly hasn't made it onto a physical disc as of yet, and that is Touche Turtle. But I've always been a big fan of these sort of gimmicky kind of cartoon shows. I always use these as background noise when I'm working. And the talents of Dawes Butler, he's a very diverse voice actor, and he really does crack me up as the character of Wally Gator. Definitely a show that, if you haven't seen it before, maybe worth having a look at, just to basically have a look at out of pure nostalgia, perhaps, if you are interested in these old cartoons. But, yeah, Wally Gator, it's uh, been a show that I've wanted to grab on DVD for a very long time. These made-on-demand editions are very expensive. This one was lingering around the 20 to £25 pound mark. And I got very lucky to find this for only nine. That was definitely a bargain for sure. Um, so that is Walligator the Complete Series. We also have the complete series of The Jetsons, which features all 75 episodes of the show. I've actually already shown this on the channel, funnily enough, in its own review video, so if you want to check out a little bit more sort of inner details with this box set, then I would recommend checking out that video. But this show is fantastic. Again, another great staple in early cartoons from Hanna-Barbera. And overall, a great sitcom compared to the likes of The Flintstones, kind of the futuristic sort of counterparts of that show. And makes for some great humour. I love the storylines and the characters with this show in particular. And if you haven't checked out the Jetsons, again, maybe worth having a look at just out of pure nostalgia, perhaps. So that is the complete series of the Jetsons. And finally for this update video, we have a whole load of box sets to go through. So I've been looking for another American sitcom to binge through since I recently finished Workaholics, which I really did enjoy that show. And I've had the first seasons of the shows Community, Seinfeld, and Friends in the collection for quite a while, so I thought I would choose one of those to go through. And I ended up watching the first series of Friends, which I really enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. I knew a little bit about the show anyway. I remember watching a couple of episodes here and there sparingly early mornings on Channel 4. Um, I just didn't really know too much about it, wasn't really overly familiar with the characters, so I thought obviously would start from the beginning. And I really enjoyed what I saw. The overall, these episodes are absolutely hilarious. The Blackout episode in particular was one of my favourites. And so I had a look on eBay to see what I could find in terms of bargains to get the other seasons. And I found a listing which had the majority of the box sets, a couple of them missing. Season 1 was missing, um, which obviously was beneficial since I didn't need to double up on that one. Um, but I got the majority of the series for only £6 delivered, which was an absolute steal. And these box sets have been kept in really great condition. The seller did me a great deal on these, so I'm very happy with these in the collection now. So I do have a lot of catching up to do. So here is uh, the second series of Friends. Series 3. Sadly, I am missing Series 4, so we jump one over to Series 5. Series 6. Series 7. Skip another one, don't have series 8, we have series 9. And the final season, season 10. So definitely a lot of catching up to do. This show was overall quite surprising. The laugh track kind of put me off at first, but I guess it's something that with time you're just going to get used to. And the characters are overall quite heartwarming. Chandler in particular was one of my favourites along with Phoebe. So I'm looking forward to watching the rest of this series. I'll probably feature series 4 and series 8 whenever I grab them in a future update video, but that is going to do it for my April 2021 update video anyway. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments if you have grabbed any of the titles I've shown in this video. Do you have any thoughts on them or wish for me to review any in particular? And for more videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios.
Are you threatening me? 